you've been working on your marriage, you may be ready to ask the question, what should we do to protect our marriage? It's kind of a looking forward question. My name is Lee Balk, and I'm the Internet's leading marriage expert. Now, let's face it, the world does not protect our marriages in lots of subtle and direct ways. The world is just not about marriage. In fact, it's uh, kind of against it. Uh, lots of TV shows uh, glorify divorce and, and affairs, and songs do, and stories do, and movies. All of those show that the world just does not live uh, in ways that support marriage. So it's up to each couple to protect their marriage. In fact, to make it a little more pointed, who does that leave in order to protect your marriage? You. You have to take uh, advantage of how you can protect your marriage, and the starting point for that is a boundary, or thinking about boundaries of your marriage. When I say a boundary, I'm talking about what you won't let be done to you or your relationship. That's my easy definition. This is a big buzzword in psychology, so you're probably familiar with it, but if you're not, it's how you stop things from being done to you, or in this case, to your marriage. Think of it kind of like a fence. Now, a fence is not a wall, it's not a moat, it's not uh, a castle, it's not some fortress. It really is just marking your property, marking where you don't want people to walk across. They can still cross the fence and you can still let them in if you choose to, but it marks it and, and clearly defines, this is what I will not let come my way. Now, boundaries of a marriage first must be agreed upon. Uh, this is something when you think about what are the boundaries of our relationship, both people have to say, yeah, yeah, that's a boundary of our relationship or it's not going to work. And it must be applied to both people. In other words, if it's good for one, it's got to be good for the other. If it's not okay for one person to have dinner with someone of the opposite sex, it's not okay for the other person to do it either. And so we have to make sure that it's fair on both sides. And whatever those boundaries are that you set up, it just has to be applied and agreed to by both. It also has to be seen as protecting the relationship, and it's not just for the other person. You know, if someone says, well, I don't have dinner with people of the opposite sex because it drives my spouse crazy, it's not the same as saying because I want to protect my relationship. So boundaries at their best are seen as protecting the relationship, not just to placate someone. In fact, if you're just placating, it's really not been agreed upon. And it also must be fair and reasonable, and what that means is how you, the two of you, decide that it's fair and reasonable. You can have lots of different boundaries, and different uh, marriages and different uh, relationships have lots of different boundaries, and, and how permeable, impermeable, how, who's per permitted in, those kinds of things. They just have to be fair and reasonable to the two of you, not to anyone else. They have to be agreed upon to the, by the two of you and applied to both people. And they have to be seen as protecting the other person. And, and what those boundaries are, they have to be what the two of you sit down and agree to. So you have to sit down and think about what are the places where we're most at risk for having our relationship pulled apart. And then work on those. Now, there are some other things you can also work on when you ask a question, well, what else? Okay, we've got the boundaries, we've had that talk, we agree upon them. Uh, what else can we do? One is work on honesty. Uh, studies show that we are constantly through the day dishonest with other people. And being more and more honest with our spouse, and, and it was, notice that uh, it doesn't say be honest, it says work on honesty because we all have ways that we portray ourselves differently than we feel. Uh, if somebody says, for instance, just the, uh, well, how do you think I look in this? And you don't want to hurt their feelings. On one level, you're being dishonest. So I'm not going to tell you that always you have to stick with that. But what is the good of honesty? The good of honesty is building trust. And whenever, for instance, if you were to say, oh, I was here and you were really there, and the person finds out, it erodes their trust. And so we're, we're not talking about those niceties of honesty. We're talking about the practicalities of, nicety, of, of honesty, of saying, being clear about where you are, who you are, what you're doing. Work on a friendship. Friendship is the cement of a marriage. Wanting to be together, spend time together, enjoying each other's company, that's how marriages stay safe because you want to be with that person. And nurture your interests. And when I say that, I mean both your individual and your mutual interests. There needs to be a combination of those things. Um, you can't do everything together, nor should you do everything apart. So work on nurturing what you like to do, what your spouse likes to do, and then find something that you like to do in common so you have s some more of that cement. Be part of a supportive community because in our tough times, we rely on our community uh, to take us through, whether that's a church group or a social group or friends or family. There needs to be some group that's watching you and saying, we're for you, we're protecting you, we're on your side of your relationship. 
and stay connected. You have to have those conversations. It's not okay uh, to only be talking to each other about um, what the kids need to be doing or what the job's like or uh, those kind of uh, stay connected is what's going on inside of me. I want you to know what's going inside of me, what I'm thinking about, what I'm processing, what I'm interested in. And remember your vows because they really cover it. Most of the time, people take the, the common vows of uh, for richer, for poorer, for uh, in sickness and in health, uh, for good times and bad times. There's not a lot left out of that, folks. I mean, if you are talking about financial troubles, it's covered in that first one, richer or poorer. If you're having a tough time with each other in good times and bad, uh, you know, it, it just covers the whole thing. If one of you gets sick, you've covered that too. You've made a promise. Remember your vows. They're not just words we say at a wedding. There are things that we pledge. They pretty much cover life if you think about it. Now, if you want to learn more about how to save your marriage and how to protect your marriage and how to move forward and how to plan on staying together in a marriage, go now to www.savethemarriage.com. That's www.savethemarriage.com.